What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I want to show you how to bind keyboard events with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to talk about binding keyboard events with Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, keyboard events with Kinter. So what am I talking about? Well, up until now, whenever we want to run a function in our Kinter apps, we click a button usually, and that fires a command that then runs the function. But that's not always what you want to do. You may want to run something based on some other event. Uh, maybe you want to click on a drop down box and you don't want to click a button. You just want to click on something in the drop down box and then you want an action to take place. Or maybe you want to type something on the keyboard somewhere. You know, you want to hit the Q letter on your keyboard and you want something to happen. Like, How do we do these sort of event driven things with Kinter? Now, with JavaScript, it's very easy to do these sort of things. JavaScript is sort of made for that. But with Kinter, it's a little bit different. So we're going to start to talk about it in this video. I'm just going to give you the very basics in this video. In the next videos, we're going to, uh, you know, go into this in more detail. I know we were talking about classes in the last video, and we're going to get back to classes. But I've been getting a lot of questions about this exact thing recently. So I wanted to touch on it really quickly before we move forward with classes. And also we'll use this in classes as well. So let's pull up our code. And I created a file called bind.py. And this is just the same starter code we've had forever. So up until now, and you'll notice I'm not going to use classes in this video, It'll just be confusing. And we're just going to talk about this uh, binding keyboard events and just that in this video. So up until now, if we wanted to take an action, we click the button. So let's just do that real quick. So let's go my button equals and this is a button we want this in root we want the text to say click me and we want some action to take place so we want a command and let's call this clicker All right so then we want to my button dot let's just pack this on the screen and let's just give this a pad y of 20 just for some spacing okay we've got this button we can click it now we need a, a clicker function so define clicker and then say we had a label, let's call it my label equals a label. And that's in root. We want the text to say, you clicked a button. And then we want to go my label dot pack. And that should work. So let's save this and run it just to make sure this is working. So Python bind dot pi. We've got this, boom, we click it, you clicked a button, right? Very basic, very simple. That's what we've always done up until now. Well, we can do something called binding and binding allows us to sort of say, hey, when this happens, bind it to this particular widget. So in our case here, we've got a button widget. And up until now, we use this command clicker thing to call a function, but instead we wanna do binding. So to do that, we just go my button and this will, be the case for almost any widget you want to use. If you want to use this on a, a label, if you want to use this on a drop down, you'll just go the name of the thing dot bind. So now inside of bind, we need to pass a couple of things. We need to, need to pass the event and the action, right? So what was the event that we want to capture? Well, we usually do that with quotation marks. And then it's almost always these open and closing brackets, right? And now what we want, in this case, I want to grab a mouse click, a left mouse click. So you want to left click on your mouse, that would be button dash one. And we'll talk about these uh, different ones of these in a second. Now, what action do we want to take place? Well, we want this clicker function to be called, right? So now we have to pass this event into this clicker function. So we do that just by going event like that. We could save this. Okay, so now if we come back here, and run this guy again, we can say click me, I left clicked on this button with my mouse, and it says you clicked the button. Now if I right click on the button, nothing happens at all. Right? If I left click, it clicks it. If I right click, nothing happens. So let's change that. So say we wanted a right click, well, that would be button dash three, button two is the middle mouse button, most mice don't have a middle button anymore, but they used to and that was button two. 
button three is the right mouse button. So if we save this and come back here and let's run this again. Now, if we left click, nothing happens. If we right click though, boom, this pops up and you can see the button's not even being pressed. I'm just right clicking on my mouse. You can't tell because it's not on camera. Well, let's see this. Let's see what we can do here. <laughs> so this is the right mouse button. Right, now my mouse has moved. All right, let's try this. All right, very carefully. See, now if I left click, the button gets clicked, but nothing happens. If I right click, it happens. So that's kind of cool. And that's all there is to it. So, so we can pass certain things through here. Um, we can pass coordinates. Where on the screen did we click the button? So let's concatenate here, and that's just event.x, and let's concatenate a space, and then event.y. Now this will return uh, an integer, so we have to change this to a string. Just convert this real quick here. str. Okay, so if we save this and run it, we can right click again and now it says 30 and seven. If we click it over here, five and 16, if we click it up here, right? If we, out, if we click outside of the button, nothing happens. If we, right, if we left click, nothing happens. But if we right click, that number changes. Now, why would you need that? I don't know, you might not. But if you're playing a game, if you're making a game or something, you need to know where the mouse is actually clicked to do something, you would do like that. Uh, let's see what else we can do. There are a lot of these event things. Button one and button three are the ones for your mouse. Uh, so we can determine if the mouse goes over the thing. We can do uh, enter. Did the mouse enter this widget? So if we save this and run it, give this a try. Here, watch this. As soon as I drag my mouse over, boom, boom. I'm not clicking any buttons at all. I'm just entering this widget. And it's firing that thing. So that's an interesting one. You could also do leave. So we have enter and we have leave. If we save this and run it. So we're in here as soon as we leave, boom. We're in here as soon as we leave, boom. So that's kind of interesting, right? All kinds of different events you can do. We can do focus in. So that means the the keyboard focus is on that widget. So think if you like tab through different things, when you tab onto it, it will do it. I don't know if we'll be able to see this or not since we don't have any other things to tab onto, but there we go, I tabbed. You can see it's been highlighted because I tabbed onto it. Now if I click somewhere else, well, there's nothing else to click on. So we can only see this once, but uh, you could do focus in. You could also do focus out if you tab away from it. Uh, let's see, return. I don't know if we can do this or not with a button. Return is like hitting the actual enter key on your keyboard. So let's run this and see. I'm not sure if this will work or not. So if we hit enter now, because we're not actually, well, okay, so I tabbed over. Now if I hit enter, it works. Enter, 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 because I've tabbed on here and highlighted it, right? So it's sort of like activated. So that's cool. Um, Let's try the key one real quick. Let's see if we can hack something that, together for key. Now this will do any key on your keyboard, right? So let's run this. And I'm gonna tab over to highlight it. Now I'm gonna hit the S key. And as soon as I do, boom, it happens. Now we can actually grab that key. We can go, let's see, you clicked a button. You clicked, let's say you clicked this button and it's event.key. So if we save this and run it. So tab to highlight it and I'm gonna hit the D key. Oh, we got an error, what happened? Let's see, event key, event has no attribute key. Oh, it's not key, it's car, that's right. So what character did we press? So if we highlight and I click D, you click the D button. Now if I hit A, S, W, Q, so that's really kind of cool. Uh, you can get the width and the height of the widget you can pass by you know event.width and event.height. Uh, you could do key symbol, that would be key S, Y, M. Save this and run it. Now I'm like hitting the shift key. Now if I hit shift and, whoops, 
shift and ah ran away from us. So the shift and the one. So this would be the exclamation mark. See, it says exclaim, shift and the plus button, plus shift and question mark, forward slash, period, you know, different symbols. So that's cool. Et cetera, et cetera. So uh, a lot of people have asked, how do you do drop downs? This video is getting a little bit long, so I think we'll do that maybe in the next video. But uh, you get the idea. You can play around with this now. And uh, it, it's, you know, a lot better in some cases to do it this way versus calling a command on a button like we used to do. There are certain instances where you just need to do something like this, where you need to grab a keyboard event or, uh, you know, moving the mouse around the, the app in some way or things like that. So uh, pretty easy and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel out and I really appreciate it. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.